one thing, not one thing, multiple things I want to talk about. Uh, I want to get into some of the, like, actual serious problems I've had. Some of these problems have been dealt with. Uh, some of them I'm still... Some of them I'm still dealing with over time. So, one of the uh, one of them that has been dealt with is my GTK2 issue. More GTK2 stuff. I know GTK2 is long deprecated, but GIMP, like uh, PC Man FM, I'm not going to leave them. I like them. I'm sure I could deal with the problems by not doing that, but like it is what it is. So, a while back, uh, can I find it? GTK2. Mm, if we go... GIMP. Uh, so a while back, if I moved a layout, uh, a, a layer, if I moved a UI element, if I did anything in GIMP, it would crash my entire compositor. Um... Here it is. Okay. It would literally just kill my compositor in an instant. Uh, this was obviously a bug. <laughs> and it happened in PC Man FM as well, which gave me an indication it's probably something to do with GTK2. So what happened at this time is... Uh, it also wasn't happening on Git at the time, which is annoying. What was happening at the time is there was a there was a patch that Vaxry forgot to <laughs> that Vaxry forgot to merge. All it is doing here is checking if max.x is less than min.x instead of equals equals zero. I don't know the context for this, but because of this equals equals zero on uh, max.y and max.x. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, it would cause, <laughs> it would cause GTK apps to just instantly crash, which was a problem, because I, I didn't know why it was happening, so for a short period, maybe a couple of days, I was like, you know what, uh, I basically have to stop using Hyperland, like, this is unusable for me, I can't make thumbnails. Because, like, if I'm making a thumbnail, I'm going to move some layers around in, in GIMP. Like, I, I, just, I just couldn't do it. Uh, when I told Vaxry, though, he just got it fixed in, like, a real short amount of time. Uh, I'd been waiting on a full release to stop using the Git version. It seems like it's now in the 0.25 release. So I will probably go migrate back over to the main version, get off Git, and uh, maybe some of my other problems will go away. So, I... That, that problem's been dealt with. My other main problem is I have had some crashes. Now, the thing about the crashes is I don't know how to report them because I don't know what's happening. I don't know the condition to cause them to happen. I don't know, like, if it's something I'm doing. I don't know if it's an application I'm running. I don't know if it's related to Hyperland, if it's something else. Under random occasions, like once every week and a half, two weeks, at some random time, a crash will happen. Sometimes I'm like reporting a video, sometimes I'm doing something else. So I don't know how to report it as a problem. Like the GIMP one, that was like, that was like a, a problem that made sense. I opened the file in GIMP, I moved it layer, it crashed. I opened the file in GIMP, move a tool, it crashes. I make a new file, do something, it crashes. Like, that was an easy one to report. Like, I could replicate that one really easily. But these other ones, which are, like, more, you know, random, unclear why they're occurring, are a lot harder to know how to report. Like, I could just go onto the bug tracker, be like, Hyperland crashing, here's my crash report. And I just don't really have any ex extra information to give. I don't think that's that useful. Obviously, the crash report is a useful thing to give, but without any replication conditions, without anything else to to properly help explain the problem, I feel like it would just be like filling up the bug tracker with nonsense without any clear way on how to deal with it. 
I'm sure some devs probably have a different opinion here, but I, I personally think that reporting a bug in that fashion isn't useful. Maybe it is useful to just give the bug the bug report and the dev can like work it out themselves, but I don't like wasting a developer's time with a problem that's unclear why it's a problem. Um, so far, like, hype, like, don't get me wrong, right? I'm not saying Hyperland's unstable. I'm saying that right now there are still cases where you can cause it to crash, and they're not clear why it crashes. It's way, way better than Hyperland back when I first used it. Like, Hyperland back when I first used it was a fucking buggy mess. It was not good back then, and it didn't even really have a lot of the advantages it has now. And maybe a lot of these problems that I'm having, like, this is the other thing. Maybe a lot of these problems I'm having are being replicated by other people, and they're now not an issue in 0.25. I still need to try that out and just see if anything's better. It, 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 like, if it's a problem, like, once a week, I don't know how to check it's better. Maybe if the problem never happens? Like, it, 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 it's weird when you have a problem that's that rare and that unclear. But, as a general experience, Hyperland is pretty much rock solid. Mostly. Like, mo mostly rock solid at this point. Um, I think the, the biggest issue with, like, Hyperland stability isn't Hyperland itself. It's the desktop portals. So... <laughs> I use the the uh, the video portal basically every day. Like when I'm recording videos, I am using the video portal. Right now, I am using the video portal to capture this window right here. Um, video portal, great. It's great that I have it, and it's great that it allows me to do window capture. That's another thing that Sway doesn't let me do. Um, I can't capture a window. I have to capture my desktop and then crop out the thing I want to see. That's stupid. Fix it. Um, that doesn't happen on Hyperland. Window capture actually works properly, like it works on, you know, uh, GNOME or KDE or X11 or Windows or macOS or every other system except for WR root sway and I guess other WR roots. Because Hyperland, you don't use the WL roots portal, you use the Hyperland portal. Uh, here it is. The Hyperland portal, which is mostly, which it, it, it's like one to one compatible with the WL Roots portal, and you can use the Hyperland portal on other WL Roots compositors. But on Hyperland, it has additional functionality, um, like some extra protocol support that's being worked on and things like that, and eventually global key bindings, which, you know. I know a thing that are being worked on the WL Roots side, even though people want them. Um, yeah. <laughs> but... The portals can be a bit finicky. So, sometimes I will open OBS. And... It doesn't open the portal. The portal just doesn't start. Like, at all. I don't know if this is an OBS problem. I don't know if this is a Hyperland portal problem. I just open it, and no portal. No portal at all. So I have to close OBS, and then it works. So I don't know if I need to, like, initialize the... Maybe maybe I'll try that. Maybe if I, like, initialize the portal beforehand, and then I then it should work. Maybe. Huh. I'll definitely consider that just to see what happens. Yeah. Because it, it, it seems to be consistent every time I open OBS. But even so, sometimes I'll open OBS, like, after I've opened it once, like, I closed it, do something else, come back, and the portal's not working then. So I'm going to close it, open it back up again, and then it works. So there's clearly something wrong with either OBS, which is very possible, OBS is a mess of a project, or there's something wrong with either the Hyperland portal or the portal, like the, the main portal project. Something in there is a bit finicky and causing issues. Um, that's another problem where I'm not entirely sure why it's a problem, so I don't really know how to report it as a problem. But when the portal's working, it, it works fine. Besides that one time where 
I was messing with stuff and then the desktop crashed. But I don't know if that was a problem with the portal or a problem separate from the portal that just happened to happen at the same time. I don't know. Um, a little while back with the portal, though, Vaxbury added the ability to save what selection you just made. So in the case of OBS, for example, I'm going to have my, my browser selection here. It's going to show... Actually, that's a problem. I'll get to that in a moment. But um, I was going to show my browser selection. But then on my, my main one, I might have... Actually, my gaming one's a good one. I might have, like, my desktop. I might have a window. I might have something else and something else. And, yeah, I, I it's, it's nice to have it saved. Now, before we forget what I was going to say, um, if I scroll this window and then we pop back over here, right now you're seeing something. There we go. So, if I swap, you are seeing something that doesn't actually exist being captured right now. For some reason, when you swap layouts in OBS, the portal doesn't keep capturing things. I don't know if this is a specific, like, specifically designed for, like, uh, into, like, portals, how it's supposed to work, but it doesn't update the capture until I move my cursor a bit. It's very strange. And it's ha it's led to me having to do a lot of um a lot of re-records and it's, it's really annoying. I don't know if that's a problem with the Hyperland portal or the W or like the the more more generally with WL roots or with portals in general. It's something I should go and experiment on in Sway, just to see what's uh, what's going to happen. Um, but. Yeah. 